This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ and an heir with God the Father. Everything that was given to Jesus before the foundation of the world was given to Him to hold in state until I came along so that He could give it to me. He didn't need eternal life. He already had it. He saved it for me. He didn't need a destiny. He already had it, but He saved it for me. All the things that were put in Christ were there for my benefit. And so now that I'm living my life for Jesus Christ, I now share all the present day things with Him. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Welcome again to the, our broadcast on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We've been talking about it for some time, but this is the student of the word. I'm so glad you're joining with us today. We began a series two broadcasts ago. This is the third one and the final one, of which I told you in the beginning that we're going to talk about the fact of our security in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now again, this is controversial in many areas and people fight about this and they don't need to fight about it. This is not a heaven or hell issue, okay? If you don't believe this or you do believe this, if you're born again, you're going to heaven, okay? That's just an issue. It's settled. I believe when you got saved, God slapped a one-way ticket in your pocket to heaven. So that's it. You're headed toward heaven. And so it's my job and responsibility here is to try to live more like heaven on earth. And that takes, again, the Word of God, being more like I am in heaven right now to where in my life I reflect Jesus Christ more each and every day. So we started out with a verse of Scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. I know in whom I have believed. That's my responsibility to believe. I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. It's up to me to believe. It's up to him to keep me. It's not up to me to keep me, nor is it, is, is it his responsibility to make me get saved. No, I have a choice to get saved, and his choice is to keep me once I have committed that against to him against that day. And so we covered a lot of scripture. We talked about the fact too, and we're getting back to it because the theme of this particular teaching is the fact that Jesus Christ dies no more. On the cross, he took every sin ever committed by mankind, being committed by mankind, ever will be committed by mankind, and he judged it on the cross. He judged every sin but one. And the one sin he did not judge on the cross, he left to us. Because if he would have died for this sin, we would automatically be saved. He did not die for rejection of himself. He left that to us. And it's up to us to judge that sin. The moment we accept Jesus, every sin's been judged. Every sin. Because right now, every sin's been judged but one. In my particular case, I make it individual. When I believe in Jesus Christ, there is every sin's judged in my life. And Jesus Christ will never come back and have to die for a sin in my life that he forgot about on the cross. Never do I come to Jesus as a Christian and say, Lord, I committed this sin. He goes, I didn't die for that one. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I have to go back to the cross, die again. No. For angels who made an eternal choice in eternity past, we have made a choice. And once we die, our choice is eternal. If we reject Jesus Christ after death, there is no coming back trying to re retake that test. No more coming back or even after death having a choice where God says, now that you've died, you still have one more chance. No, it's a point unto man once to die and then the judgment. But if I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I am kept by His power. Again, He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. And that day I'll be standing before Him will be at the judgment seat of Christ. And the sinner will be standing before Him a thousand years later at the great white throne judgment. We begin to take up, and I pointed out these are seven retroactive things that happened to us the moment we accepted Jesus Christ. When I when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior and that one sin that separated me from eternal life has been judged by my accepting him, by my confessing his resurrection on the cross, the moment that happens, I go back retroactively with him to the cross. And the things that happened to him before he was taken into heaven, I retroactively am part of. The first thing we took up was I was crucified with Christ. Notice the moment I accept him, I'm in him. So being in him on the cross, I was in him. I said yes to Jesus, so in essence, I'm in him, and I go back retroactively 2,000 years ago. And in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. 
It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I'm in union with him and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the first thing retroactively that happens, I was crucified with him. The second thing that happens was I died with him. That's found in Colossians 3, 3. For you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. The moment Jesus died on the cross, I died with him. You might think Jesus Christ was there all by himself. Himself. He had two thieves, one on each side of himself, but Jesus Christ was all alone on the cross. Well, the moment I believe in him, I was in him. All right. And what happened to him? I'm so he was there as my representative. Did he need to be crucified? No, he was the righteous son of God. He never committed a sin. And on the cross, he didn't commit a sin. Jesus took my sin on the cross. And the moment I accept him, I become identified with him. In him, I I was crucified with him. In him now I died with him. I was born in Adam and I had to die in Adam to be resurrected or born again into Christ. In Adam I'll die and Christ shall all be made alive. We made this clear at the closing of the last broadcast is that in Adam I am dead. In Christ I am alive. I am born in Adam with no choice, but I have a choice to come into Jesus Christ. Satan forced it on me. And the moment I was born in this earth, I was born in Adam. On the cross, all mankind was seen as dead before God. The cross killed all mankind. I go back and relive that, but then also I come all the way up to his resurrection because on the cross, Jesus died for me. But later, when he was raised from the dead, I had no choice uh, as far as death is concerned in Adam and what happened on the cross. But I do have a choice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ to join him. And so in, in on the cross, all mankind is seen as dead. We read that in Romans, we read in Corinthians that through the cross, everyone is dead. But I have a choice to come to the resurrection and accept him as Lord and Savior. So in Colossians 3, 3, I died and my life is hid with Christ in God. Good works or bad works have nothing to do with going to heaven. Good works or bad works have nothing to do with going to hell. Rejection of Jesus Christ is what sends a person to hell and eventually the lake of fire. Accepting Jesus Christ is what sends a person to heaven. Again, we pointed out, heaven is going to be filled with good people and bad people. Hell will be filled with good people and bad people. You're not in heaven because you were good. You're not in hell because you were bad. You're in heaven or hell because you either accepted Jesus Christ or rejected Jesus Christ, period. Those names not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Again, I was part of a dead tree in Adam. God doesn't judge me as an individual stalk. He judges me as a branch attached to a tree. I am either attached to a dead tree or a living tree. In Adam, all die. That's the dead tree. In Christ, that's the living tree. All are alive because of who I'm attached to. My life comes from him because I'm attached to him. I'm one with him. The third thing is, is we were buried with him. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 says, we were buried with him. Notice this, the moment I'm in him, I'm with him. I was with him in, on crucifixion, with him in death. Now I am with him in burial. Romans 6, 4, we were buried with him through baptism into death. But just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So I was buried with Jesus. When he was buried in the ground, we're told this in Ephesians, when he was buried, I was buried with him. So I was crucified with him. I died with him. I was buried with him. And now the fourth thing is I was quickened with him. After Jesus had been three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, he was quickened. This word means made alive. And so suddenly by the power of God, he was made alive. And we are told this in Ephesians 2, 5. We were dead in our trespasses and sin, and he has quickened us or made us alive together with Christ. Notice again with Christ. The moment I am in him, I share everything he has. I have no life of my own. I share his life. I have no, I have no inheritance of my own. I am a, a heir with him, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I do not have a future. My destiny is because I share a destiny with him and I share that destiny with him wherever he is, I am. And so I have all that. Everything I have in the Christian life is because I am in Christ and I share it with him. Everything I have for life, everything I have for eternity is all because of Jesus Christ. So again, we were quickened with him or made alive. When Jesus Christ was in that grave and Jesus Christ was totally dead, all of a sudden when he was quickened, I was quickened because I was crucified with him, buried with him, died with him. But the moment he was quickened, I was quickened too. I was made alive. And so the moment he did then, next of all, 
is I was raised with him. Number five is resurrection. We were raised up with Christ, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12. And this tells us we were buried with him in baptism, in which also you were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So I was buried with him. So, or pardon me, I was resurrected with him. Through him in resurrection, when he rose from the dead, I rose from the dead. I like to think of it this way. In fact, I've had a demonstration of it. I have a person lay down, a person lay next to them. And I go through this fact. I said, there's Jesus, and there I am with him in, in, as, he's been, as he was in the grave. And it was, he was in hell, too. I was there with him. And so when Jesus Christ was on the cross, I was in him. I was with him at that point. And so I might as well have been one of those two thieves on the cross. I'm glad I was the yes thief, not the no thief. Then next of all, after he was crucified, I died with him. After he di- I died with him, I was buried with him. After I was buried with him, I was quickened with him. And so I have people laying there, and I have them join hands. And I said, okay, open your eyes because you've just now been quickened. And the moment you open your eyes, you open your eyes. And both open their eyes at the same time. Why? Because when he was quickened or made alive, I was made alive. Then as I pick up one, which is Jesus Christ, I act like God the Father. I raised him from the dead since he holds hands with me. The other person stands up to everything happened to Jesus. I shared with him retroactively. When I was five years old, retroactively and accepted Jesus Christ, I was retroactively taken back to the cross. And at five years old, I was crucified with him. I died with him, was buried with him. And I was quickened with him. And number five is I was resurrected with him. And so I was raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And guess what? Bob was raised also. You were raised also from the dead. The next thing that happened was Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and I ascended with him. Ephesians 2, 6 tells us this. It says, I was raised up together with him and I am sit, I am seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Notice this, and he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when God raised me from the dead, about 40 days later, Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. For 40 days, he walked on this earth, and then he was taken up into heaven. But the good news is I was taken up into heaven with him. And then I am uh, raised up with him, and then next of all, seated together in heavenly places. When Jesus sat at the right hand of the Father, I also was seated at the right hand of the Father. Ephesians tells us that they were seated in heavenly places with Christ. I share that with him. And then finally, I'm going to have a resurrection body, just like Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us this in verse 20, But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Meaning his resurrection body, I will have one too. Now that I'm asleep, and, and that means physically dead, uh, spiritually I'm in heaven with him. Sleep is only used here for Christians. Never is sinners said to be asleep, they're said to be dead. Christians are asleep because one day we're going to wake up. And that resurrection day, the rapture of the church is the day that the alarm clock will go off, will rise from this earth with the sound of the trumpet, and we will rise to meet Jesus and have a resurrection body just like him. It's amplified in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 49. Verse 49 says this, As we have borne the image of the man of dust, that's Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, that's Jesus Christ, and where the first body uh, that we had that came from Adam was made out of dust, the second one's going to be a resurrection body made out of spirit. There is a natural body and a spiritual body. I will have a body just like his. All these things are retroactive simply because, you know what? I am in Christ and I share this with him. We're going to come back right after the break and you'll get to hear about the book of Romans and perhaps something else we'll be talking to you about. So we'll see you right after the break. Romans New Testament Commentary is a verse-by-verse teaching of the Book of Romans from the personal study notes of Pastor Bob Yandian. In his letter to the Romans, Paul clarified the principle of justification and whether it is by deeds of the law or by the work of God. Paul reveals that the law has never been a means of salvation and that faith has always been the means of spirituality regardless of the dispensation. This epistle also helps us to understand how we may gain victory over the flesh. If we as believers walk according to our new nature, the inward man, we are controlled by the Holy Spirit and not the sin nature. To order Romans New Testament Commentary, visit bobbyandian.com or call 918-250-2207. Before the break, we covered seven retroactive truths that we have because we've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
Again, I, at five years old, received Jesus as my Savior, but I was taken back in seven retroactive things happened to me. Number one is I was crucified with Christ. Number two, I died with Him on the cross. His death as now I share it with Him. Next of all, I was buried with Christ. And uh, when He was put into that tomb, I was put there with Him. Next of all, quickened with Him. The moment Jesus Christ was given life after three days and three nights of, of suffering for us and then dying for us, suddenly he was quickened and quickened by the Holy Spirit and given new life. So I was quickened with Jesus Christ. Next of all, I was resurrected with Jesus Christ. That's number five. Number six, I ascended with him. That's Ephesians 2, 6. And I'm now ascended with him seated with him in heavenly places. And the seventh thing is, is when Jesus Christ received a resurrection body, I have yet to receive mine, but retroactively, the moment it happens, it's taken back the time when Jesus was given a resurrection body, I will have one too. Now here's the important point. I'm in Christ. I, that, this, this, this is so good. Blood covenant means our lives have been mingled together. David and Jonathan, the blood that was mingled, they were one together. Shared their life, shared their possessions, shared their weapons. One's protection was for the other. Everything was shared, and that also included those inside of them for the next generations to come. Now, here's the point. The moment I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I am one with Him. I share everything with Him. Past, the seven retroactive things we discovered, but also present tense. Right now, everything that happens to me in life is because I am in Christ. I have no righteousness of my own. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. The moment I accepted Him, I have no life of my own. I share my my life with him. His life is my life. My destiny is out there for heaven, but you know what? That's because I am predestined with him and I share his destiny. I mean, uh, inheritance. I don't have any inheritance of my own. I share his inheritance. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ and an heir with God the Father. Everything that was given to Jesus before the foundation of the world was given to him to hold in state until I came along so that he could give it to me. He didn't need eternal life. He already had it. He saved it for me. He didn't need a destiny. He already had it, but he saved it for me. All the things that were put in Christ were there for my benefit. And so now that I'm living my life for Jesus Christ, I now share all the present day things with him. And here's the point again, because Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for every sin and judged every sin of mankind except for one, I'm the one that judged that one sin, which was rejection of Jesus Christ. Now there's nothing in my life that needs to be judged again. Jesus will never have to go back to the cross and die again for me. And I share that with him. Let's go to Romans chapter 6 again. This is where we began. And uh, this was one of the first verses we quoted at the beginning of this three-part series. And this three-part series simply is built around the fact Christ dies no more, period. All right? Now, I know you could read that and you go, oh yeah, Christ dies no more. No, I want you to understand, Christ dies no more. He will never have to leave heaven, go back and die for a sin he forgot about. Never will have to go back and die for something he said, I overlooked that one. I, well, I really didn't think that was important, but here it's come up. So maybe I should and I have to crawl off the throne and go back and die again on the cross. No, he covered everything. There's nothing that Satan can hold against you. If, and if that's before salvation, it's automatically covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and will never be brought up again. If it's after salvation, if I confess that sin, it will never be brought up again, but it will never keep me out of heaven. No, the sins that kept me out of heaven and the sin that kept me out of heaven was rejection of Jesus. I judge that. In my life, sins that happen as a Christian hinder me in life. They hinder my prosperity. They hinder my prayer life. They hinder my walk with God. I can get sick. And that's why the Bible says, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. So lots of things can happen in this life, but it does not hinder my eternity. All right? All right. I am a Christian. I'm a Christian whether I'm carnal or spiritual. I'm, a, I'm in Christ whether I'm a baby or a full grown. Again, I am in Christ. And so I share that with him. Romans chapter 6 tells us again, Jesus will never go back to the cross and repeat what he did there. He did it one time. That's all that he ever has to do. Romans chapter 6 verses 9 and 10, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin one time for everyone, but the life he lives, he lives to God. I want to say that again. For the death he died, he died to sin one time. All right? And he died for everyone. On the cross, everyone died in him. But the life he lives, he lives to God. That is eternal. So what happened on the cross to him was temporary. It lasted for three days and three nights. But once he sat down at the right hand of the Father, that is forever. 
All right, you understand? That simply means now that I am in him. Jesus Christ was crucified once and will never be crucified again. Jesus died once and will never die again. Jesus was buried once and will never have to be uh, buried again. Jesus was made alive once and will never be quickened again. Jesus was raised from the dead once and will never be raised again. Jesus was taken to heaven once and will never be taken there again. And Jesus was seated once and will never have to be seated again. Everything Jesus did for me, he did one time and will never have to repeat it. When it says he dies no more, that means the whole process. Jesus came and lived on this earth and proved himself. He'll never have to do that again. Jesus Christ was taken and crucified on a cross. It happened one time, and that's all God said it'll ever have to happen. When he died on the cross, he died and will never have to die again. He was buried and never had to be buried again. I know you've heard this, but I'm repeating it again. I want you to get this. Everything that happened to Jesus Christ in his life, but also, and mainly here, what this verse is talking about is him going to the cross, burying the sins of the world. He'll never have to do it again. Jesus Christ was there on the cross and crucified. Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ was buried and will never have to do that again. Jesus Christ was quickened one time and will never have to be quickened again. Jesus Christ was ascended into heaven, never have to go back and ascend into heaven again. Jesus ended up in heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will never, ever have to be seated in heaven again. And what this comes back to is now, but wait, I'm in Christ. What do you mean you're in Christ? Jesus and I are attached. We are one with each other and constantly one with each other. When I hurt, he hurts. In other words, I am so much in union with him. It's not just the fact I share his resurrection. It's not just the fact I share his eternal life. It's not just the fact I share his inheritance. But you know what? In my life, he shares my hurts and problems. It says, when I hurt, he hurts. He's touched by the feelings of my infirmities. The things I go through, he went through. Because you know why? He's human. But on this earth, he was human. He went through all these tempted like I am. He never yielded to the temptation. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to yield to it. Jesus was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin, which means he never yielded to any of them. And he went through greater things than I'll ever go through. He's tempted in all points as I am, which means there's probably some points I'll never be tempted in, but he did. All of mankind, he suffered just as we did going through the problems of life every single day. So Jesus and me are attached. Jesus and you are attached. If you've accepted Jesus, you're one with him. Again, the mingling of blood. You cannot unmingle blood. You are united with him forever. And God and Jesus are one. You are one. Jesus prayed this prayer in John 17. Lord, that they may be one with me as I am with you, them and us, us in them. We are so united with him. You can't tell where Jesus ends and I begin. You can't tell where I end and God the Father begins. We are so mingled together like that blood. We are mingled together and will never, ever be unmingled again. I am joined with him and I have his eternal life. Therefore, I have everlasting life. I do not have intermittent life. I do not am alive today and dead tomorrow and then alive the next day. I never have to wake up thinking, am I born again? I am born again. I am united with Jesus Christ. It cannot be unmingled done. Therefore, again, he shares the feelings of our infirmities. Now, Christ dies no more. And although death had dominion over him previously, it no longer has dominion over him. When death came on him on the cross, spiritual death as well as physical death, he will never have to die again. He went through that one time and judged it once forever, once and for all. But the point of it was we just talked about, I was in him. Everything he went through, I went through. He went to the cross once and died and will never have to die again. He was crucified one time. Bob was crucified one time. I'll never have to be crucified again. Next of all, Jesus Christ died on the cross. I was in him. He will never die again. I will never die again. Jesus Christ was buried and will never be buried again. I went to the cross with him. I was in him. I was buried with him. But Bob will never have to be buried again. Jesus Christ was quickened and will never have to be quickened again. I was quickened one time when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and given eternal life. I will never have to be quickened again. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. I ascended with him. Jesus Christ was seated at the right hand of the Father. I'm seated with him. And since it happened with Jesus Christ once and he will never have to die again, Christ dies no more. Bob dies no more. You die no more. You are in Christ. Since we share his resurrection life, we are alive forevermore. For me to die, Jesus would have to die too. Listen, although I am in him 
and everything he has is mine also he shares with me. And the point of it is, if I died, he would die too, because I am that united with him. If I'm no longer saved, then he's no longer the redeemer, because he's so attached to me. So again, for me to die, Jesus would have to die too. For Jesus to die, I would have to die too. It's impossible for me to lose my salvation. It's impossible for me to lose my eternal life. Just Again, it's just as impossible for a sinner to accept Jesus Christ and then lose that eternal life and as it is for the angels to sin and to join the fallen angels. John chapter 10, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, I give to them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hands. Again, for me to lose salvation, he would have to lose his salvation. Jesus Christ dies no more. Bob dies no more. I am in him. So the beauty of all that is I am born again. Are you born again? You can enter into eternal life. You can enter into everlasting life by one simple phrase. Father, I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead just for me. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ died on the cross. I'm going to accept him so that I die one time. Jesus Christ was crucified. I'll be crucified one time, buried one time, quickened one time, raised one time and seated with Jesus Christ forever and forever. I will share his destiny, not only everything past retroactive, but everything future for millenniums to come, millions and billions of years to come. I will share everything with him because I am in him. Thank you, Father. I receive everlasting life. I am one with Jesus Christ. To do this is to have union with him. Thank God I'm a member of the body of Christ. Thank God I'm a member of the family of God. And I'm a member of the family of God forever and forever. For me to lose my eternal life, is just as impossible for me to lose my natural life. You say, oh, but you can stab yourself. No, you can only kill your body. You can't kill what's on the inside. And I'm here to let you know that if I could lose my eternal life, that makes eternal life and the new birth less secure than my first birth. But my second birth is even more secure. I'll have it forever and forever throughout all of eternity because I'm born again. Well, again, welcome to the body of Christ if you're born again and you've received eternal life. Jesus Christ dies no more, you die no more. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 918-250-2207. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact or call us at 918-250-2207. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.